Miss Cookie's Nature Trail. Big people! Big people coming! <laughs> Hello, it's me, Lucy. Oh, panic over, everyone. It's Lucy. We thought it might be someone dangerous. Big people have big feet. Yes, and we don't like being stepped on. Ah! Oops! Sorry for stepping on you, Mr Mayor. I didn't see you there. It's fine. Glad it's just you. But it's not just me. My teacher, Miss Cookie, is bringing my whole class here today on the nature trail. Lots of big children and a big teacher. They mustn't see us fairies. Or us elves. Or Mrs Witch. Or the dwarves. Or Redbeard, the elf pirate. Yes, yes, yes. The whole of the little kingdom is meant to be secret. That's my class. Here they come. Quick, into the houses. Close the windows and doors. Oh, did I just see little windows in the toadstools? All right, gather round, children. Yes, yes Miss Cookie. Here are some toadstools. Tick toadstools off on your lists. Toadstools. Miss Cookie, do toadstools have little windows in them? Uh, no. Lucy, that was close. Yes, but I think we got away with it. Next on the list is an oak tree. Let's go and find one. Oh, no! They're heading towards the great elf tree. We have to get there first. <laughs> big people! Big people! Coming this way! Ah! Big people! Big people! Everyone into the tree! Good. It looks like a normal tree. Oh, look, a little person. Ah! Here we are. You can tell an oak tree by the shape of the leaves. Do oak trees have little people living in them? What? <laughs> of course not. Tick oak tree on your lists, everyone. Oak tree. Phew. That was close. You're telling me. Right. Next on the list is insects. This way, children. Uh-oh. They're heading straight for the little castle. We have to get there first. Wait for me. Daddy! Daddy! Big people are coming. Big people? Quick, close the shutters. Good. Now we're completely hidden. Hidden? But what about the castle? Perhaps they won't notice it. Won't notice it? Won't notice it? A little fairy castle with a flag on top? I know. I'll just magic the castle invisible. Brilliant, Nanny. Invisible, invisible, castle disappear. Invisible, invisible, castle disappear. A castle! This field is a perfect place for insects to live. I think I just saw a castle. Then it went invisible. Oh, what fantastic imaginations you children have. Oof. What? There does seem to be something here. I can feel a tower with a flag on top. Uh, Miss Cookie, maybe there are some insects over here. Uh, oh, oh yes, insects. That's what we're looking for. Miss Cookie, I found an insect. Well, oh, well, oh. lovely. Now, does anyone know what this insect is called? Gaston. What? Oh, uh, I mean, a ladybird. Well, oh, well. Oh. All right, children, tick insect on your lists. Insect. And now, on to the lake. I think it's this way. Thank goodness. They're moving away from the little castle. But they're going right towards Mrs Witch's house. No time to lose. How can we hide Mrs Witch? She's huge. Maybe she could pretend she's not a witch. Good idea, Ben. Hello? Hello, Mrs Witch. Listen, uh, there's no time to explain, but you have to pretend you're not a witch. OK. Who am I, then? You're just a nice old lady. OK. Here they come. Remember, 
You're just a nice old lady who wouldn't hurt a fly. OK. Hello. I'm not a witch. I'm just a nice old lady who wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, I'm, uh, pleased to hear it. My name is Miss Cookie. I'm Mrs Witch. Your name is Mrs Witch? Uh, yes, but I'm not a witch. I'm just a nice old lady who wouldn't eat a fly. Uh, that's good. Can you tell us the way to the lake? Yes. Straight down the path and through the trees. You can't miss it. Is that a witch's hat you're wearing? Yes, but I'm not a witch. But you are called Mrs Witch. Yes, and you're called Miss Cookie. But you're not a biscuit. Talking of cookies, if anyone would like a snack, take a roof tile. They're gingerbread, you know. Thanks, Mrs Witch. Bye! Bye! <laughs> they never suspected a thing. But now they're going to the lake. And that's where Redbeard the elf pirate sails his boat. We have to warn him. Hello? Redbeard the elf pirate speaking. Listen carefully. Big people are coming your way. <laughs> I hear them, and I've no time to hide. Pretend to be a toy. Okie dokie, I'm a toy. Here's the lake. I found a toy boat. There's a doll on it. Oh, that's Redbeard. Who's Redbeard? I mean, uh, the doll's got a red beard. Some poor child must have lost it. Let's put it here where they'll find it. Miss Cookie, I found a tadpole. Lovely. Tick tadpoles off your list. Tadpoles. And that's the end of today's nature trail. Come on, children, back to school. Yes, yes Miss Cookie. Cookie. Well done, Redbeard. They never suspected a thing. It was a close call and no mistake. They've been all over the little kingdom now, but we haven't been discovered. Yes, well done, everyone. The big people have no idea us little people live here. They didn't see the great elf tree or the little castle. And they didn't find out Mrs Witch is a witch. All I can say is it's a good thing they didn't bump into the gnome. Dumpty Dumpty Doo Da. Ah! The gnome! Dumpty Dumpty Doo Da. Hello. Evening all. Hello. Are you going to a fancy dress party? Party? Is there party food there? I like food. Uh, we're just on a nature trail. Oh, yes. What have you seen on this nature trail? We've seen toadstools and insects and tadpoles. Toadstools, insects, tadpoles? But there's loads more stuff. Really? There's the elves and the fairies. The what? That blabbermouth is giving everything away. How can we stop him? I know. Come on, Gaston. Yes, the elves live in a tree. An oak tree? Yes, it's got tiny windows in it. I thought I saw a castle. You saw it all right, because it's there. The posh fairies live in a little castle. Made of tiny bricks, it is. Is there a witch? Of course. She's called Mrs Witch. And do fairies live in these toadstools? Yes. This is a secret fairy village. Shush. Hey, what's that? Mr Gnome, big people must never know about the little kingdom. Oh, yes, of course. Leave this to me. Now then. You know how I was talking about toadstools, insects and tadpoles? Yes! Right. Everything I talked about after that, forget it. Forget it? Yes. And there's no magic dwarves, dragons or goblins in these woods neither. OK. Come on, class. Let's go home. Bye! Goodbye. I think we just about got away with it. Bye, everyone. Bye, Lucy. That was close. Close? You told them everything. But I also told them to forget it all. Anyway, the little kingdom is safe again. Yes, and it's all thanks to me. 
Springtime! Wow! Look at all the lovely tulips. Yes, Holly. It's the first day of spring. Wow! There's a flower right outside our window. All the daffodils have come up. I love springtime. Ben! Ben! Are you coming out to play? I'll be right down. Have you seen all the flowers? Yes, and... Oh, those leaves are moving. There's something in there. It's coming out. Ah! <laughs> Ooh, a little hedgehog. <laughs> Gaston's frightened him. He's rolled up into a ball. Sorry, Mr Hedgehog. Oh, a hedgehog. <laughs> He's woken up for the spring. Woken up? Yes. Some creatures sleep all through the winter. Don't they get very hungry? They make sure they have a big meal before going to sleep. Oh, there's something else waking up. And it's big. It could be a bear. It could be a... Hello there. Ah! The gnome! Do gnomes sleep through the winter too? Yes, and when they wake up, they're very hungry. Ah, what's for breakfast? Uh, Mr Gnome, wouldn't you like to sleep a bit more? Hey, What do you mean? Uh, maybe it's not springtime yet. We could still get some snow. Eh, Nanny Plum? Ow! Stop it! It could snow at any moment, couldn't it? Ow! I don't think so. It could snow if magic was used. Oh! You want me to magic some snow so he'll think it's still winter. Shh! Why didn't you say so? Oh, dear me, it's snowing. I'd better go back to sleep. Hang on. Over here, it's sunny and there's flowers. You try to trick me. Ha-ha-ha! <laughs> I like a good joke. Shame I don't know any. I've had some funny dreams, though. Would you like to hear them? Uh, no, thank you. Yes, there's nothing so boring as other people's dreams. Anyway, I dreamt I was in this rowboat and the oars were made of cheese. Then a lot of pigeons wearing pyjamas started chasing me. How interesting. <gasps> There's lots more to tell. But first, I need food. Hello there. Ah! I mean, hello, Mr Gnome. This looks like a nice comfy house. I wouldn't mind living here. Uh, you can't live here. I like a man who speaks his mind. We'll have some good chats while I'm living here. Mr Gnome, we'd really love to have you stay, but the front door is too small for you. Well, if you really want me to stay, I'll try my best. <laughs> Nearly there. Just my bottom to go. Hello, everyone. It's a bit of a squeeze in here. I'll just move this little staircase. He's eating everything! <clears throat> What's for dessert? <laughs> Save your food! Mr Gnome, wouldn't you rather live somewhere with other gnomes? Oh, no. Gnomes don't like other gnomes. Gnomes tell very boring stories. You never get two gnomes living within a hundred miles of each other. Hello? Nanny Plum, you must come back to the little castle at once. Sorry, King Thistle, but we're having a problem with a gnome. What? But I've got a gnome at the castle. Is there any more toast? There must be two gnomes. <laughs> no need to panic. What do you mean? You heard what the gnome said. Gnomes don't like other gnomes. We just have to get them together. When they see each other, they'll run a mile. Problem solved. Yay! We'll arrange for both gnomes to meet each other at Big Hill. You seem to be out of food. Have you tried the breakfast tree on Big Hill? Breakfast tree? Never heard of it. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it, Nanny Plum? Ow! What did you nudge me for? Yes, over on Big Hill, there's a tree that grows sausages and eggs and bacon. Is there? I've never seen it. Ow! 
You don't even know you're doing it. Nanny, he wants you to magic one. Oh, I see. You want me to magic up a breakfast tree? Shush. OK, then. Hmm. I can smell breakfast from here. Hello. Quick, Your Majesty. Tell your gnome that there's a breakfast tree on Big Hill. Ooh! They say that breakfast don't grow on trees, but my, my! A tree with eggs, bacon, sausages and toast. The most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Look, they're about to meet and run a hundred miles from each other. Uh, a gnome! What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. Go on, then. What are you doing here? I like breakfast. Would you like to know why? No. I'll take that as a yes. It's because I like fried eggs and sausages and bacon and pancakes and... <coughs> You've eaten it all! Well, if you didn't talk so much, you could do some eating. Right! I'm going a hundred miles away from you. I'm going a thousand miles away from you. It worked. They've both left the little kingdom. What a brilliant plan. Well done, Nanny Plum. Thank you, King Thistle. <clears throat> it was my idea, Your Majesty. No, it wasn't. I thought of getting them together. I magicked up the breakfast tray. Let's just say elf cleverness and fairy magic has saved the day. Yay! She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. Still here! We thought you'd uh, gone far away. I tried, but I just can't get her out of my head. That lady gnome's beautiful, isn't she? Do you like the way her eyes sort of sparkle? For pity's sake, can't we talk about something else? OK, then. Don't you think she has pretty ears? Oh, this is terrible. He's in love with her. That's springtime for you. He's a fine figure of a gnome, isn't he? Oh, yes. And hasn't he got a nice big tummy? If you say so. I've made up a song about him. Would you like to hear it? No. I'll take that as a yes. Oh, look, I think he's coming. <gasps> Is he? How do I look? Is my hat on straight? Oh, it's you. I thought you'd gone. Yes, well, I, I just... That is to say, I, er... Uh... That's the first time I've seen a gnome lost for words. Would you like to hear a song I've written? <laughs> yes. I'll take that as a yes. Oh, my lady gnome has lots of lovely hair and lots of pretty eyes and ears so fair. <laughs> I like it. I'm Gloria. They're friends now. Gloria, will you be my own lady gnome and live with me forever in the little kingdom? Yes, I will. Come, my dear. I'll show you your new house. Here we are. This is where we'll be living. Ooh! Whose idea was it to get them together? Nanny Plum, Your Majesty. No, it wasn't. It was your idea. Well, you made the breakfast tree. You told me to. Stop! Stop! What are we going to do about it? We can have a big wedding. Hello again. I'm afraid we have some bad news. What is it now? We've had a look at the elf tree and Gloria feels it's a bit tiny. I'm sorry we didn't design our elf tree for gnomes to live in. Nice of you to apologise, but it's still too small. And your castle isn't really to our taste. It's too old-fashioned. Old-fashioned? And drafty. So I'm afraid we'll have to find somewhere else. Oh, well, goodbye. It's a shame we won't see you ever again. Oh, don't worry. We'll be back for our holidays. See you next spring. Red beads, rainbows.
Dumbo. Hello, Redbeard. Ahoy there, Ben and Holly. Are you ready for a day of adventure? Yes, we are. Nanny Plum, me lovely fairy maiden. Are you coming too? Oh, if I must. Ha ha! A fine sunny day such as this is just right for adventure. It started to rain. No adventure today, Mr. Pirate. A rainy day such as this is just right for adventure. Look, there's a rainbow. Ooh. And a rainbow is a pirate's best friend. Why is that? What do you find at the end of a rainbow? A pot of gold. And pirates love gold. Oh, pots of gold at the end of rainbows? That's just a fairy story. Well, you're a fairy, aren't you? Uh, yes, but... Come on, then. Make ready to sail. Ben, you can be cabin boy. Aye, aye, Captain. Holly can be lookout. Aye, aye, Captain. Polly Parrot can be the ship's parrot. Bah! Pieces of eight! What about Gaston? Uh, he can be the ship's cat. <laughs> uh, cats don't normally bark, do they? Well, no. Gaston, can you say meow? <laughs> Sounds like a meow to me. Hop aboard, Gaston. <laughs> and Nanny Plum can be... Oh, wait a moment. What is it? You're a woman. Yes? Sailors say it's bad luck to have a woman on board. Bad luck to have a woman on board? How can you say such a thing in this day and age? You're right. It's probably a lot of old sailors' nonsense. Welcome aboard. What's my job, then? You just stand there and look pretty. Huh! Now let's set sail for the end of the rainbow and find that pot of gold. Hurrah! 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 Yeah, hurrah. Big clouds ahead. I can't see the rainbow anymore. Just keep heading for where it was. That's thunder. A storm? Oh, dear. Can we go home now? Go home! The adventure's just beginning! Ah, he's in the Ooh. Ooh. How do you stay still, Redbeard? You just need to get your sea legs, that's all! It's a good job none of you get seasick! Oh, my tummy! Nanny Plum, you've gone green! Oh! <laughs> Man overboard! Oh, sorry, I mean woman overboard! Help! Catch hold of this life belt! <laughs> oh, I fell in the sea! It was horrible! Perhaps those sailors were right! It is bad luck having a woman on board! Bad luck for the woman! I just want to get off this rocking boat and onto solid ground. Land ahoy! Straight ahead! Ah, a little island. Ah, oh, it's so nice to stand on something that isn't moving. Redbeard, do islands normally have fins? Not as a rule, no. What about eyes? Hardly ever. It's lovely being on dry land. Uh, I think you should come back now. No, I want to stay here. Pick me up on the way home. Nanny Plum, hurry! I'm not leaving this island. I wouldn't exactly call that an island. Why not? Because it's a fish and a whopping big one. It's Big Bad Furry. Ah, help me. Don't worry, you're in no danger as long as he doesn't think you're food. Like a fly or something. Ah! Nanny does look like a fly. Ah, I'm not a fly. I'm not a fly. Ah, get away. Don't let Bad Flap your wings so much, Nanny! Fly faster, Nanny! Oh, Nanny, don't look so like a fly, will you? Ah! Ah! Nanny, catch hold of the hook! Oof! Now she's 
she looks a bit like a worm on a hook. Ooh, fish like eating worms. I'm not a worm. I'm not a worm. Whoops. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to use a fishing rod. Ah, 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 ah. Hang on, Danny. I'm pulling you in. How's me sweet darling? Not having a very good day, are you? Not having a good day? Not having a good day? A fish just tried to eat me! Yep, those sailors were definitely right about the woman on board bad luck stuff. Fog! Coming towards us! Fog? That's bad. Can we go home now? No, we've got more adventuring to do. I can see lights. It looks like another ship. Why, blow me down. That'd be the ship of my friend, Captain Squid. Ahoy there, Captain Squid. Funny, there's no one on deck. It's very quiet. Hello. Hello. Anyone home? Look, there's a meal on the table. It's still hot, but there's no one here. Meal on the table, but the boat's empty. This is certainly a mystery. Ooh. No one will never, ever know what happened to poor old Captain Squid. A mystery that will never be solved. Here's a note. Gone to bury treasure, back in five minutes. Oh, that solves it then. So, where do you think Captain Squid is? Mmm, where would you bury treasure around here? The end of the rainbow! The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow! That'll be the gold Captain Squid's burying! Come on, let's get after him! It's not getting any closer. That's the thing about rainbows. When you walk towards them, they go further away. We're not going to walk there. We're going to fly. Fly? But you're an elf. You don't have any wings. Yes, but I'm an elf with a parrot. Ah, he's a mate. Saddle up, shipmates. There's the pot of gold. And there be Captain Squid, burying treasure. Redbeard, this is my treasure, not yours. How did you find me? We just followed the rainbow. Ah, rainbows. They're a pirate's worst enemy. No, they're not. Rainbows are a pirate's best friend. Depends whether you're burying treasure or finding it. Good point. So, anyway, don't let us stop you, Captain Squid. You get back to burying your treasure. Thank you kindly, Redbeard. I was just about to bury it here. Hang on. You can't trick me that easily. No one must see where I bury my treasure. You've all got to close your eyes. Thank you. OK, you can look now. So, where did you bury it? Why, it's right over there. Ha <laughs> ha, you're trying to trick me again. Oh, you won't get it out of me that easy. The rainbow's moving. It's gone to the treasure. Ah, blasted rainbows. Don't worry, Captain Squid. We won't dig it up, will we, Redbeard? No, of course not. Is it home time yet? Yes, I think it is. Today's adventure is over. And I'd be honoured to take you all home on my yacht. That sounds a nice way to travel. Yacht? That's a rowing boat. Plenty of room if we all squeeze up. <laughs> Where can I sit? Wait a minute. Are you a woman? Yes. Oh, bad luck having a woman on board. It's all right. Turns out it's bad luck for the woman, not for us. Oh, in that case, welcome aboard, me lovely. Oh, no! It's rocking worse than Redbeard's boat. Fun, isn't it? Yes! That's what being an elf pirate is all about. Having fun. <laughs> By the way, none of you get seasick, do you? The mermaid. Ah, 
Lucy, I do love fishing. Me too, Dad. It's so peaceful. Just what I need to get my nerves back in order. I wonder if we'll see any elves or fairies. Huh? Do we have to talk about weird magical stuff? <laughs> you know it upsets me. But you've seen the elves and fairies too, Dad. I've been thinking about it and I've decided I imagined it all. There are no such things as fairies or elves. <laughs> Hello, Lucy's dad. Ah, an elf in a submarine. Hello, Hello Lucy. Lucy. Hello, Ben and Holly. We're fishing. Uh, yes, we were just having a quiet morning's fishing. Dad, did you see that big fish? It's Big Bad Barry. <laughs> Barry. The fish is called Barry. Yes, the biggest, baddest fish in the lake. Whoa, what a whopper. <coughs> Dad, <coughs> you have to throw him back in the water. <coughs> he can't breathe. Of course I will. But, but just take a photo so I can show my friends. There you go, Barry. Bye-bye. <coughs> We've got another fish. Oh, well, this isn't a fish. It's a mirror. Can we keep it, Dad? Yes, it's from the bottom of the lake, so it can't belong to anyone. Cool. OK, well, it's, it's been nice chatting to you, um, little folk. <laughs> but I think it's time to go home. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Do you think the mirror is magic, Dad? I hope not. I've seen enough magic for one day. Listen, somebody's crying. <laughs> it's a girl. <gasps> Hello, what are you doing in the lake? I live here. You live in the lake? Yes, I'm a mermaid. <laughs> my name is Oceana. Why were you crying? I've lost my mirror. That must be the mirror Lucy found. And where is this Lucy? She's a big girl, so she'll probably be on her way to school. Bye, Lucy. Pick you up later. Bye, Dad. Oh, no. A mermaid's mirror must never be seen by big people. Don't worry. I'm sure Lucy won't show it to anyone. Look, everybody. I found a mirror. Ooh. Ooh. Lovely. That's perfect for our show and tell. Come up to the front, Lucy, and show the mirror to the whole class. Ah! My poor mirror. I'll never get it back because I can't walk on land. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll get your mirror back. Oh, thank you. Home time, children. Hi, Dad. Hi, Lucy. Good day. Lucy. Psst. Lucy! Ben! Holly! What are you doing here? We've come for the mirror. It belongs to a mermaid. A mermaid? Wow! Yes, and she needs her mirror back. Oh, OK. Please tell me this is just a game. Elves and fairies are one thing, but mermaids? Haven't you read about mermaids in books? Yes, but I've also read about dragons and witches, and they're not real either. Yes, yes they, they are. are. We can show you witches and dragons. And loads more if you like. No, no, thanks. I'll take your word for it. So, where is this mermaid? After you left, she got called back home to the bottom of the lake. She'll be having her dinner. Fish, probably. We have to find Oceana and give her mirror back. Right then. Into the submarine. Lucy, would you like to come too? Yes, please. Um, we'd love to join you, but I think we are just a tad too big to fit in your little submarine and... Ah! What's happening to me? Just shrinking you down. <laughs> My turn. Um, will we stay little forever? Oh, no. The spell will wear off in a bit and you'll grow big again. All aboard! <laughs> <laughs> Prepare to dive! Dive, dive, dive! It's beautiful! Look, Dad! 
Yes, it's all very pretty. In fact, I'm beginning to quite enjoy this magical adventure. You see, Dad, the world of elves and fairies is fun. Yes, I don't know why I was so worried about being magically shrunk down. It's amazing to be as small as these sweet little fishes. Not all the fish in the lake are sweet and little. Don't forget the fish you met this morning. Big Bad Barry. As I remember, Barry is about this big. Uh, that was before we were shrunk down, Dad. Now who would be about... That big! Oh, look! It's Barry! Ah! What does he want with us? He wants to eat the submarine. Any boat with me in it, Barry wants to eat. Yum, yum. Hold tight, everyone. I'm going to reverse. <laughs> Now we go forwards. It's no good. That is too fast. He's going to eat us. Don't worry, Lucy. We've been in Barry's tummy before. And it was fine. That's good to know. Well, hello, Barry. Mm. I don't understand. He should have eaten us by now. Maybe he remembers how my dad was nice to him this morning. That's right. You let Barry go. And fish never forget. Or is that elephants? <coughs> oh, that's nice. Barry's saying that as you so kindly let him go this morning, he is your best friend forever. In fact, he now thinks of you as his brother. Lovely. Uh, one tiny problem. In all the excitement of being chased by Barry, we've got lost. <laughs> Barry's saying that he knows where the mermaids live and he'll take us there. That's what his brother wants. His brother? That's you, Dad. Oh, yes. <clears throat> um, Barry, old brother, please lead us to the land of the mermaids. <laughs> Right hole. Look, Barry's found the mermaids. Mermaids love to swim along. Mermaids sing their mermaid song. Mermaids comb their lovely hair. They sing so beautifully. Wow, a mermaid palace. This must be where Oceana lives. Diving suits on, everybody. Nice, Barry. Uh, we're friends of your brother. Yes, they're with me. Mermaids, mermaids everywhere. Hello. Hello, mermaids. We're looking for Oceana. She's over there, being sad. <laughs> Oceana, we brought your mirror back. Oh, thank you so much. But why is it so tiny? We had to shrink it down to fit in the submarine. Don't worry, the spell will wear off soon and it'll grow big again. There you go. My mirror. Thank you all so much. You're very welcome. Well, it's been uh, very interesting meeting you uh, mermaids, but we must be getting back now. Bye, Oceana. Bye, everyone. Bye, Betty. <laughs> suddenly got big again. Will that happen to me and my dad? Yep. And the fun bit is, you don't know when. Which means we should get a move on. We don't want them to grow big in the submarine. Ooh, I'm growing! Yeah, so am I. We must get to land. Full speed ahead. Almost there. Almost there. Try not to grow too much. See, there was no need to panic. We had plenty of time. What an adventure! Yes, it was quite amazing. Remember, Lucy's dad, the little kingdom is meant to be secret. You must not tell any of your friends what you saw today. Tell my friends what I saw today? Let me think about that. And then the magical fairies shrank me down to the size of my thumb. I saw singing mermaids, and did I tell you that I now have a fish for a brother? No, I will not be telling anyone what I saw today. <laughs> Gaston's birthday. <laughs> Come on, Gaston, wiggle your legs. 
<laughs> Gaston loves wiggling his legs. <laughs> oh, has Gaston got one new spot today? I'm not sure. Do ladybirds get new spots? Ladybirds get a new spot for every birthday. Wow, Gaston's got lots of spots, so he must have had lots of birthdays. <laughs> and lots of birthday parties. Oh. <laughs> Oh, have you never had a birthday party, Gaston? <laughs> That's really sad. Daddy, Mummy, it's not fair. Gaston's never had a birthday party. Well, I wish I'd never had a birthday party. Oh, darling, it's your birthday tomorrow and you'll enjoy it. No, I won't. This year I don't want a party. Oh, Daddy, you say that every year. Well, this year I mean it. I don't like my parties with the elf band singing about me getting older. You're lucky you're getting a party, Daddy. Gaston's never even had one. <sighs> then give my party to Gaston. I'm going to have a bath. Oh, same every year. So grumpy about his birthday, but he always enjoys it in the end. Come on, let's go and see how the elf band are getting on. Hello, wise old elf. We've come to hear the song you're doing for Daddy's birthday. Ah, yes. We've come up with a good one this year. I think King Thistle will be very pleased. King Thistle is old. Old, 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 and today he's even older. King Thistle is old, 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 old. Very sweet. And I, Redbeard the Elf Pirate, will fire myself out of this cannon in the King's honour. But the King's birthday isn't until tomorrow. This is a dry run to see if it works. Light the fuse! Lighting the fuse. Whee! Hurrah! Where do you think he'll land? Who knows? Ah. Oh. I do like a nice, relaxing bath. It's good to get away from all that talk about birthdays. Happy birthday, Your Majesty! <laughs> ah! Get out of my bath! It's not my birthday! I know! This is a dry run! Now, see here! I don't want any birthday stuff! Ah, that's what you say every year! Look! I don't want a cake, I don't want a song, and I don't want a pirate in my bath! So, you really don't want a party? No! I don't want a party! Not this year, not next year, not any year! Never! No! Party! And that's when he started shouting. He was a tiny bit angry. So he really doesn't want a party? No. Oh, dear. What will we do with the presents we wrapped? And the cakes I baked? And our new song? And me cannon! We've got a whole birthday party ready and no one to give it to. Um, Daddy did say Gaston could have his party. <laughs> Poor Gaston has never had a birthday party. Would you like a birthday party, Gaston? Then it's decided it will be Gaston's birthday party. <laughs> Hooray! We'll need a new song for Gaston from the Elf Band. Yes, Your Majesty. And I'll bake Gaston some cakes. And I'll fire myself out of me cannon in Gaston's honour. He'll appreciate it. Not like somebody whose name I won't mention. The King, I mean. <laughs> this will be the best party ever. What do you think Gaston would like for his birthday present? A squeaky toy. Very good. <coughs> now to wrap it. Spotty wrapping paper. Brilliant. Hello. I've finished my bath. Uh-oh. What are you doing? Relax, darling. It's nothing to do with you. A likely story. It really isn't, so stop fussing. Ah, uh, fine. Mmm. Can I smell cakes? I thought so. What's going on, Nanny? Are you baking cakes? Yes, I am. 
These cakes had better not be for me. <laughs> They're not. Now, Shoe, go on. I haven't got time to talk to you. I suppose it is nice that they want to give me a party so much. <laughs> what shall we do for Gaston's birthday card? Let's draw a picture of Gaston. Good idea. Hello, Holly. Hello, Daddy. We're making a birthday card. I don't suppose it's for me, is it? No. No, of course not. Ha! I don't think my face is that red. And I don't have black spots. I told you, Daddy. It's not for you. <laughs> oh, yes. So you did. Ben! Hello, Dad. Do you want to help deliver the party invitations? Yes, please. Off we go. <laughs> They're delivering invitations for my party. How sweet. Special delivery! Invitations to Gaston's birthday! Gaston's party is tomorrow at the Frog Pond! Are you all coming? Yes! yes. Of course we are! Where next? We mustn't forget Gaston! It is his party! <laughs> There you go, Gaston. An invitation to your very own birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Gaston loves eating letters. So, are you coming to your party, Gaston? Uh. I think that means yes. Oh, how are the preparations going for my party tomorrow? Your party? You're not having a party. Ho <laughs> ho! I know your little plan. What little plan? You told us not to plan anything. Ha <laughs> ha! That's right. I did. Good night then. Good night. <laughs> <sighs> oh, no one here. I expect they're all downstairs. <laughs> no birthday cards. Where is everybody? Of course! They're all secretly hiding outside, ready to shout, Happy Birthday, King Thistle! Oh, there's no one here. They must be having the party somewhere else. Ah, that sounds like a party. I'd better go and find out where it is. Not much of a party without me, the birthday boy. Everyone is here. And Gaston's brother Tony with Pam and the little ladybirds Amber, <laughs> Emerald, <laughs> and Keith. <laughs> Happy birthday, Gaston. Here's your present. <laughs> it's a squeaky toy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm sorry, do you have an invitation? I don't need one. I'm King Thistle. King Thistle, King Thistle. No, your name's not on here. What? But it's my party. No, it's not, mate. It's Gaston the Ladybird's party. What? Take it easy, fella. It's supposed to be a happy occasion. It's all right. He's with us. What's going on? Where's my birthday party? You said you didn't want a party. I know I said that, but what I really meant was I do want a party. Oh, Daddy. You are silly. Yes, I know. Oh, well, I'm sure Gaston won't mind sharing his party with you. <laughs> Gaston, be nice and share your present with King Thistle. <laughs> Gaston, that's not how to behave on your birthday. <laughs> For me? How kind. It's a squeaky toy. Yes, for you to chase. And now it's time for the birthday song. He's round and he's red with big black spots. How dare they? It's about Gaston, Daddy. He rolls on his back and he barks a lot. He's Gaston the ladybird. That was really fun. Maybe birthday parties aren't that bad. What's that noise? Happy birthday! Oh! Yay! Hooray! Happy birthday, Daddy. Oh, oh, thank you, Holly. The dwarf mine. <laughs> Catch Barnaby. To you, 
strawberry. To you, Holly. Whoa! What was that? I don't know. It was coming from the old dwarf mine. But isn't the dwarf mine empty? Yes, I think so. I can hear voices. Was loud. We'd better tell the grown ups. Wise old elf, there are noises in the mine. The mine? What mine? The old dwarf mine. You're not supposed to be in there. It's dangerous. We weren't in there. We just heard a big bang. Yes, and the ground shook. Whoa! Like that. Oh no! The dwarves have woken up. Woken up? Yes. Deep inside the mine, the dwarves have been sleeping. They sleep for years and years. Then, when they wake up, they start to dig. What are they digging for? Precious jewels, gold, diamonds, gemstones. But digging for things doesn't make a big bang noise. It does when the dwarves do it. They carry out big explosions underground. And then dig through the mess. They just dig and dig and dig and dig and dig. Yes, yes, Mrs Elf. They keep digging until they are so tired they fall asleep again. They sleep and sleep and what sleep. What do dwarves look like? They're big. Bigger than us. Yes. Dwarves are huge. This is a worrying time. The whole of the little kingdom might get dug up. Holes everywhere. What are we going to do? Just hope. Hope they dig in the other direction. Hope they don't come anywhere near us. Morning, all. Just letting you know there'll be some digging work in this area. Oh, no. We apologise in advance for any inconvenience caused to your journey. Journey? What journey? We're not going anywhere. No? I would if I were you. Look at this hole. Someone could fall in. Hmm. I think we need to talk to King Thistle. Elf to see you, Your Majesty. Hmm? Dwarves, Your Majesty. Dwarves? They're back. No. I'm afraid so. We haven't had a dwarf infestation for years. But now they've woken up. I see. Well, they live underground mostly. Maybe they won't bother us. But they've already dug a hole by the elf tree. It's only one hole. Maybe you can turn it into a pond or something. Your Majesty, you don't understand. This is just the start. The dwarfs will dig up all of the little kingdom. Wise old elf, you worry too much. It will be fine. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I say, do you mind? What's that, mate? You've made a great big hole in my courtyard. Now, pal, don't get upset. Upset? My castle is falling over. Yeah, you want to get that fixed. Now, listen here. I'm the king. Oh, a complaint, is it? You'd better talk to the boss. Right, I will. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Good work, chaps. Ding, Keep it going. Ding, ding. Hello. Ding, I want ding, to speak ding, to the boss. Ding, is he... Hang on a minute. Oi, lads, ding, just pop down a second, OK? Right, you were saying... I want to speak to the boss. I'm the boss. Do you have an appointment? He doesn't need one. He's the king. A king doesn't make appointments. Not even at the hairdressers. Uh. Daddy doesn't have any hair. He's bald. Well, that's not our fault. Look, we want to complain about the noise. What noise? The noise from the mine. Oh, I can't hear anything. That noise. Now, look, I'm the king, and I'm commanding you to stop all the digging. Yeah, the thing is, though, you're only king above the ground, just to the topsoil. Below that, I'm the boss. But... We can't stop digging anyway. That's what we do. We won't stop until we've found gold and diamonds and gems. I've 
got an idea. Nanny Plum can magic you up some gold and diamonds and gems. Good thinking, Holly. There we go. Problem solved. Now kindly stop digging. But I can magic up that stuff. Eh? Where's the fun in that? You have to dig for it. Now, if you don't mind, some of us have work to do. Come on, lads. Let's get digging. Well, that could have gone better. Let's go away and come up with another plan. So if no one wants this treasure, can I have it? Yes, yes, take it. Silence, please, everyone. Now, we are gathered here to discuss the dwarf problem. They're making loud bangs. They're digging holes everywhere. They've dug up my carrots. Yes, yes, we all know how annoying they can be. Can't you magic them away? No, fairy magic doesn't work on dwarves. I know how to get rid of the dwarves. We take all this treasure... Aww. ..sneak into the mine and bury the treasure deep down. Oh, and then the dwarves will dig it up and they'll be happy and stop digging. Correct. Excellent plan. All right, Nanny Plum's in charge. Off you go. But it's my plan. OK, you can both be in charge. Thank you, Your Majesty. But I'm in charge, really. We need to bury the treasure deep down in the mine. But how do we get inside? The train! Clever Ben! Wait for me! Dwarf mine, here we come! <laughs> <laughs> wow! How deep is the mine? Deep, very deep. Hold tight, everyone. Oh, no! For diamonds, we dig for gold. Dig, 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 dig. How can we hide the treasure with all the dwarves around? I know. I'm good at voices. This is the dwarf boss. Come on, lads. Let's go, go, go. That's brilliant. Now watch this. All right, boys. Tea break. Tea break. Okay, okay boss. <laughs> well done, Nanny Plum. No probs. Right, let's hide this treasure. Quickly now. Dwarves never stop digging for long. Here they come. Gold! I found gold! There we go. Diamonds! There's diamonds here! Have we found treasure? Yes! Lots of it! Well done, lads. Keep digging. Eh? What do you mean, keep digging? In case there's more treasure, of course. We always dig twice as hard when we find treasure. Oh, no! What are you doing here anyway? This is the dwarf-only area. We put the treasure there for you to find. What? We thought you'd stop digging. We thought you'd be happy. Why? How thoughtful of you. And we thought you'd stop making that racket. Well, I suppose all the noise could be a bit upsetting. Yes, yes it is. And that's why we apologise in advance. Come on, lads, let's get digging. But, but... Ugh, all this digging has made me quite tired. Oh, me too, boss. Oh, oh. I think they're going to sleep. Yes, they've tired themselves out. Night, night, boss. Night, night, lads. Good. Now they'll sleep for years. They'll sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep. And then they'll wake up and start digging all over again. Yes. They'll dig and dig and dig and dig and dig. <laughs> <laughs>